This episode is brought to you by Axe Body Spray. Yes, the official smell of incel edge lords everywhere. Welcome to Coyote Tales. My name is Donna Shannon. I am your host. <laughs> and here with me today, as he often is, is my husband Ryan. That's just because we live together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. What? Like, I can't talk of myself for. You're like, well, that's bullshit. You talk. <laughs> you you talk. talk to yourself all the time. I know. I talk plenty. And I answer. So, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Exactly. So anyways, it's been a while since we've actually done a podcast. If you're paying any attention, today is June 18th, 2023. Our last podcast we did was April 26th, 2023. Well, we had stuff going on in between there, so... Oh, the biggest problem was this. So, I this is a clear sign that I'm getting older. I hate learning new things no not you (laughs) and it's not like everything it's specifically technology related right because it's like oh no there's a new app i don't know how to use it i'm scared i'm so scared i got a new phone there's so much stuff on it i don't know what it does (laughs) yeah so what happened this time was I've been using like a fairly shitty program to edit our podcast. Fairly it, shitty. Yeah. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> no, it's not free. What is a shitty program? It well, okay, it's called Camtasia, and what it's really used for is like recording when you're doing demos and things like this to like. Either presentations combined with PowerPoint or like when I'm recording stuff, showing people how to do things on LinkedIn, it does the screen along with the camera capture. Okay, I get it. So that's what it's for, right? But I've been using it to record our podcasts. Because? Because I know how to use it. (laughs) (laughs) And when you try something different? This is what happens. So... We were gifted an awesome set of three uh, Yeti blue balls. (laughs) Microphones. Microphones. Not what you think. Yeah, it wasn't like actual Yeti's blue balls. (laughs) Poor Yeti. Poor Poor Yeti. Yeti. (laughs) Hey, it gets cold up there in the snow. And he's alone. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But from David Germain with the Disjointed Podcast. And... The other problem with Camtasia is it only allows one microphone. Correct. That's one issue we ran into. Right. And so with all these new microphones now, I have to use a different program. So everybody, I know it already. Our listeners are going to be laughing at me because I can't figure out how to use other programs. Like uh, I have Adobe Audition. So... A literal multi-track recorder. You can bring in each one of the microphones. You can control them individually. You can sweeten everything. And I cannot get the shit to work. We fucked around with it for, what, almost an hour trying to get the microphones to work in the different levels. and Well, well we being Donna and Ryan just sat here playing on his phone. Right. But you're like... <sighs> <sighs> All right, and then... Where is the microphone, Donna? Where is the microphone? I I don't see the microphone. I know, I know. And after all that struggling with it for an hour, still couldn't get it to work right. And then I'm like, I am too busy for this shit. (laughs) And it's been two months. Almost three months. Almost three months. (laughs) And now here we are, back again with a new podcast. On the old system. On the old system. Uh, I I don't do technology. I just pretty much in pretty much. But you learn new games all the time. Well, gaming is different because it's it's the controls are all basically the same. Right. Right. Yeah, and it's like I am an expert in LinkedIn. I mean, I know that stuff by the like the back of my hand. I literally right. teach it. All the time. I'm in it every single day. 
True. But here's what's really pathetic. I have a degree in music business management and audio engineering. Yeah, but it's how old is it compared to the technology today? I mean, not saying you're old, but... I, mean, I, I did graduate in 1994. Not saying you're old. I am old. I am just said I'm old. I can't learn new technology because well, I'm old. Because we are old. Yeah, this new technology scares me. I, you want to know the funny thing? I go, I have all this internet, wide world of internet out there in the world, correct? Right. And I go to probably eight, ten sites only. <laughs> oh, no, you want to know what's pathetic? I've got a cell phone with more apps on it than I even know what they are. <laughs> and I use it for four things. I uh, Okay, I lied. A five. And here's the things that I look at every single day. Outlook, so I'm looking at my business email constantly. Okay. okay. That's that's understandable. Facebook. Even when I'm bored, I'm looking at it because I don't know what else to look at. I agree with that statement, yeah. Um, my fish game, <laughs> okay. which is called Zen Koi, that I've been playing for two and a half years. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have all the fish, and I still keep playing it. You know why? Because it's easy. I know how to play it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Zillow. Not because I'm looking to buy a house. It's just... I like looking at houses and seeing what the market is and go, ooh, what's our investment on the place that we bought, uh, you know, last year compared to what's in the market today? And... Well, you used to play a dragon game a long, yeah. long time, but you said that got too hard. No, it got boring. Yeah. And they changed some of the games, so they sucked. But it was like a chore. It's like log in every day, collect all your money, collect all your food. And when you have like 15 different islands and I don't know, 200 fucking dragons, it got... <sighs> but you Not play the fish it, game. But the fish don't require Thought. food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they catch food, but it's just free food in the pond. It's not like these damn dragons where I had to plant the food, collect the food, feed them. And I was so advanced in this game, the dragons, you had to, you have to feed them to get them to level up. Right. Well, I had so many of them that were like the top ranks. It's like you feed them once and then it's a hundred thousand pieces of food to feed it once and that's and you got to feed it three times to get it to level up yeah you collect a hundred thousand f pieces of food in a day and you can feed one dragon oh it roots. takes two days to grow that much food wow unless you buy the food which you did yeah oh you want to know the worst part was what? this was like five six years ago that when i was watching maddox and we'd be playing the dragon game and then all of a sudden i'd turn around and he's like feeding all the dragons the fucking food. And I had just spent like $200 buying food. And I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Where'd all the food go? He's like, oh, look, but you're top of the leaderboard in the world for feeding the fucking dragons. <laughs> you don't get anything out of that. Bragging rights. I got a free dragon. Well, there you go. That I have to feed. That you have to buy food to get food to feed food. Because I remember one year, all you wanted for Christmas was gift cards for that game. Yep. I got. I think I got you a hundred dollar one. Jasmine got you a fifty to a hundred dollar <laughs> one. Your dad got you a fifty dollar to a hundred one. Yeah. And you don't even play it anymore. No. Well, how many games have you spent tons of money on that you don't play anymore? I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I have games that I bought that I've never played. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have, like, the zombie board game that we're, like, Debating, do we get rid of it? And each one of the expansion packs was forty to fifty dollars. Yeah, but a lot of those were gifts. They were gifts. So, and I'm not getting rid of them. So I'm making it official. Right. Yep. So, anyways, our new sponsor, Axe Body Spray. <laughs> oh. Because since the last time that we tuned in with you, dear listeners. Uh, I had an incident involving Axe Body Spray. Axe Body Spray is not our sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Just to clarify that. Oh yeah, I'm sure they would love to be associated with incel edge lords everywhere. <laughs> true, true. So, 
I was at my office and they were fixing a door in there and these two workers come up and one of them is just like drenched in Axe body spray. So for most people, that's just an obnoxious smell. But for me, I'm allergic to it. It's yes, it's one of them weird ass allergies that I have. And one of them specifically had some variation that has tea tree oil in it. And I didn't ask him. I knew because within five minutes of this guy being around me, I could feel my chest starting to tighten up. The asthma was kicking in. My throat was closing up. And I was like, oh, shit, here we go again. Benadryl time. Tons of Benadryl. Debating whether, do I need to do an EpiPen or not? I had to leave my office. Yeah, you did have to come home for the day. Yeah, I did. And I did. And there was the big, de- you know, we kept debating, do I do the EpiPen or not? Well, my theory is if you're going to do the EpiPen bad enough that you need it. I just should have done it. You should have done it and we should have taken you to the hospital. No, I didn't want to go to the hospital because they always look at me like I'm a dumbass. Dumas. Yeah. It's pronounced Dumas. Because it's very rare to have anaphylactic or very severe allergic reactions to inhaled substances. It's usually you have to eat it. It has to be on your skin or you have to be like stung. Well, as much as he was wearing, it was like it coated the office, right? Oh my God. It was so bad. So Mm. apparently... I'm allergic to toxic masculinity. <laughs> Officially. Officially. Well, thank God I don't have toxic masculinity. I don't think so. No. <laughs> I did find some Axe body spray in the garage. And, of course, I'm sitting there going, how can I kill Donna? Huh? Roll voice tea, tea tree oil, lilies. Hmm. Max oh. body spray. Yeah, I know the list keeps growing. The ke- list keeps growing. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Intentionally. Intentionally. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't. Yeah, I just. I'm allergic to nutmeg, which is a very strange tree nut to be allergic to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't eat a lot of. I love pumpkin spice, but can't do a lot of pumpkin spice because it has a lot of nutmeg. Yeah. So you are allergic to the Karens with all their pumpkin spice lattes and Ugg boots and messy buns. I'm allergic to Karens anyways. <laughs> little bitches that drive me fucking crazy. I know. <clears throat> Karens are a pain in the ass. I don't know why they call them Karens. Because it's just kind of like the typical uh, generic. name. Generic. Bitch, white girl name. A bitch, white girl, Karen. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, Karen's driving me crazy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. And I'm not talking about my sister, Karen. No, not at all. Yeah, right. Wink, wink. Not at all. <laughs> hey, nice sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't often share important life tips on the podcast. You have. have. Well, maybe not on this one, but on my business one I have. Yeah, you have on your business one. Yeah. So I I want to drop this very important tip to people. You know that phrase, blood is thicker than water, right? Correct, yes. And usually it's said to you by some shitty relevant relative who's trying to get you to do something that you don't want to do. Correct. Yeah. And... Did you know that's not the real phrase? Well, yeah, I only learned about it a couple well, yesterday or or this morning. I did not know the real phrase. What's the what's the real phrase? This is actually one of the helpful things I've learned off of Facebook in the last few years. The real phrase, which dates back to like the Middle Ages, is not "blood is thicker than water." It is the blood of the covenant is more important than the water of the womb. So the covenant, to me, basically is the people that you want to associate as your family. Exactly. It means the people that you choose to have in your life, your friends or your family of choice, (laughs) is way more important than some asshole that you happen to be connected to through a bloodline. 
So, I mean, it makes perfect sense with me if you think about it. Since I am adopted, yeah, you know, I recently found out some bad news, and I reached out to the, to my would they be sisters, stepsisters at the time. So I'm more the sisters I have now, Kathleen, Aaron, and Colleen. I'm more. How do you put it? Well, they're, you've been raised with them. Raised with them and the other people. So I would do more for my family here than my family that's not my family. But it is my family. I have confused myself. Okay, yeah. Because that's not what that means. You're thinking about it too hard. Right. So it's like your friend Leo yeah. that you hang out with every day. Yeah. Just... And you talk with every day and you play games with every day. His relationship is one that you choose. I choose, correct. So he is a family by choice. Okay, correct. And sometimes you may have family members who are part of your family of choice. But it's a classic example here is people in the gay LGBTQ plus community. So if you ever watch like RuPaul's Drag Race, like or well, actually for you, it'd be you're walking through the room while I'm watching RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Um, one of the my favorite features of the show was when they're in the backstage area and they're getting their makeup on, they're getting ready, and they kind of talk about things in their lives. And there's many of the drag queens who have to talk about their family. And uh, on the last season that I just finished watching, which I think is season 15, so uh, Mistress Isabel Brooks, who's a drag queen from Texas... Uh, was basically kicked out of her home at age 17 when her family found out that she was gay. Okay. And they couldn't stand it, so, you know, they were kicked to the curb. And even with all the achievements that she has, it's never valued. It's They can never get past who they choose to be. Okay, I get you. I got you now. Well, that makes sense. So then the drag community embraces her. That's the family of choice. Yeah, that's the drag community and not her birth family. Yes, so that's what the blood of the covenant means. Okay, I get you. I, I'm with you now. Right. Versus the water of the womb, these shitty people that you just happen to be related to. Karens. Could be Karens. Depends. I mean, if you're a Karen... And the other person is like somebody just trying to live their life and be who they want to be. And you're like, oh, no, you have to, like, follow the church and shit like this. That's a classic example there. Right. Okay, I get you. Yeah. So, you don't necessarily have to be a freedom thinker to enjoy your blood of the covenant. You could have all the people in your church who shitting on all the gay people. And guess what? That's your family of choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is your family of choice, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean you're an asshole or not. It's like, what assholes do you choose to congregate with? I have a lot of strange family members, then. A lot of strange family members. I have a lot of strange family members, too. I hang out with comics. Yeah. I'm an introvert. I don't hang out with anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you do hang out with some weird people. It's all you. It's all me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's what that means. That's my important life tip for somebody. So if you have that shitty person in your life who's going, give me money, or you have to do X, Y, Z and all the rest of this stuff. Or you can't be yourself because you're embarrassing the family. You can tell them to fuck right off. Because when they try to use that statement, blood is thicker than water. You can go, no, it fucking is it. It's the blood of the covenant is more important than the water of the womb. And think about that while we take a break. And we are back. So, speaking of weird comics and hanging out with that, Ryan actually... Oh, you fucking computer, man. 
fucking technology. Technology is fighting with us. Hopefully, y'all didn't hear the ding. Anyways, techno fear. But as I was trying to say before I was so rudely interrupted, is uh, I produce a comedy show in Pueblo, Colorado once a month at the Blue Cactus Room. Check us out. Awesome show. Amazing room. We sell out every time. So I'll put a link for the Facebook group page, whatever, in the notes. But anyways, Ryan came down to the show for the first time last weekend. Well, Pablo from here is, is a long, it's two plus hours away. It's just two hours. Well, two hours away. It's a two hour drive, which I think is nothing, but for Ryan, that's super long. That's very long for me. Just anything over, you know, I take half an hour to drive to work. That's a long drive for me. Mm-hmm. But for those of you who don't know what Pueblo is all about, <laughs> so Kremlin, Colorado is pretty much like the armpit of Colorado. Correct. It's right. pretty bad. It's bad. So uh, by comparison, Pueblo would be the inflamed junkie's vein. <laughs> 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 yeah, the mole right under the armpit, you know, that mole that gets irritated a lot. Yeah. It's like you put deodorant and it rips, oh, son of a bitch, that's going to hurt for a week. Right, and we actually got a hotel this time. I usually just make the drive in one day, so right. after the show I come back. The show ends at nine, so it's not terribly late. Um, But I was asking my friend who lives in Pueblo, where shall I get a hotel? And she goes, well, don't get anything on Highway 50, because that's where, like where all the drug people are. I'm like, all right, point made. Simple enough. Yeah, well, we'll get to him. And so we're pulling off of I-25, which is the main highway in there. And I'm at the exit, and it's like, ah, oh, damn it. If you turn right, that's Highway 50. If you turn left, it's Highway 47. I picked the hotel on Highway 47, which was just on the other side of the highway from Highway 50. I was scared. <laughs> it was... So, as we're waiting to turn from the off-ramp, there's this guy in the middle of the road, obviously homeless, with his shirt off, Flapping it at cars like a matador's cape and yelling at people. Yeah, it was bad. He threw something at a bunch of people too. Uh, I would. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was rocks. I don't dirt, know dirt, rocks, used needles. I don't could be <laughs> any of the above. Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it was all like, oh well, that's an interesting development. Ole. <laughs> yeah. We get to the hotel. There's a big sign on the front of the hotel that says they will not rent a room to local residents. I'm like, what the fuck? I've never seen that before. Anywhere. And I've been to some shitty hotel, well, shittier hotels. Yeah. And it was like, that's weird. And then it's got like the slogan underneath, you know, we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. And it was on there a couple of places, the front door up by the front desk and things like this. So it's like, huh, no homeless, no drug addicts, no whores. Okay. No elevator, because the elevator was broken. Elevator was broken. And then we get into our room and there's earplugs provided. I'm like, well, that's weird. I've never walked into a hotel room that had earplugs. We found out in the middle of the night why. I used the earplugs. I ran a bag, so it was probably about one o'clock, and I'm, I'm, the, you know, the AC sounded like a freaking chainsaw, and you can hear trains passing. And it was course, the train. The it, train passed right by the hotel. And then, of course, Donna snores like a freaking what is that angry rhino? So I'm like, fuck it, it's one. I'm putting these earplugs in. Yeah, because I'll use earplugs because I go to bed early, and I'll use them for, for. July 4th and certain holidays just because I go to bed so early that I, I'm trying to muffle all the sound. Mm -hmm. But so that was the hotel experience. It was a scary hotel. I, I've been in scarier, but the bed did suck and the pillows were weird. The pillows were like, it was half a pillow. Yeah. It was like they took it then they cut the pillows in half, sewed them up and said, there's your pillow. 
Yeah. I mean, a, that makes them sound like shitty prison pillows. They weren't quite that Oh, high. I've been on prison pillows. They were close to prison pillows. Yeah. The only thing different about prison piz- pillows is they're about an inch thick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these were thicker than that. Not much. No, they were. They were, but it's because they were all scrunched up. No, they were also squishy, so as soon as you put your head on them, they squished. <laughs> yeah. 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 All the fluff went out. But, okay, for the rest of Pueblo... To give people a, an image of this. <laughs> so, if you go through a lot of the neighborhoods, it looks like a set from Breaking Bad. And I'm not talking about the good neighborhood where Walter lives or the even better, you know, one where the, the sister and and the DEA agent lives. Her husband or yeah. her brother-in-law. Yeah. No, this is like where the customers of live. Walter and Jesse live. It's uh, an interesting place. It I'll was s- a lot of a lot of empty dead buildings, a lot of empty businesses. I think that was just the area that we were, because when you went down closer to the Riverwalk and downtown, it was actually a lot nicer. But um, to give you another clue on some of the changes, uh, we had to change our rating for the comedy show because. I was just like, hey, comics come in, say whatever you want. But the May show, we had a little bit of pushback on that one because it was racy. Well, it wasn't just racy. The, one of the comics had probably a three or four minute set about abortion. I think that's the one that really tipped them over. Probably. Well, the fact that you're driving into town and there is a big sign of. Oh, yes. There's a big billboard right by the highway you know for abortion for well, not to do abortion not yeah uh, so yeah, pro-life pro-life pro yeah because normally you don't see too many billboards that are for abortion specifically <laughs> <laughs> we did see one what was the one uh vasectomy get one. Oh my god yes so there was this awesome billboard by our house like probably eight years ago i wish i had gotten a picture of it because it looks so ridiculous it didn't even look real but it totally was and this billboard number one was in a neighborhood that's fairly bad off of sheridan so it's bridged on both sides by really big cheap trailer parks right and there was a sign that just said vasectomy the wise choice and it had a picture of a black guy and a hispanic guy <laughs> It was. It didn't last very long. No, no, no. It was. It was, uh, it was up there for maybe a week, if that. Yeah, I. I've never seen it since, and I. I I've just, never seen anything like that before or again after. Yeah. It was like, yeah, that's a little tone deaf. <laughs> just a bit tone deaf. I mean, it nothing is. racist here. Nothing racist at all. <laughs> So, yeah, that wasn't too cool on on behalf of people. But this sign in Pueblo, it says, it's got like a nine-week-old fetus picture on there. And it says, love your baby. Right. So, (laughs) apparently there's a lot of Catholics and stuff in Pueblo. Yeah. Well, there is a larger Hispanic population, a lot of white people. Um. Pueblo is one of the more economically challenged cities in Colorado. It has one of the highest unemployment rates. But it's cheaper than Denver. That's why people move there. Well, yeah. I mean, the housing's a lot cheaper, but you're living in Breaking Bad territory. Yeah, that vein. You're living in that vein. You're living in the inflamed vein. But the food was good. I mean, yes. it was authentic Mexican food. And even the breakfast place we went to was pretty good. Yeah. So, what did you also think about the the comedy show itself? It was good. It was it was enjoyable. I had a good time. I laugh, but you know, I laugh at jokes a lot sometimes. I would hope so, but <laughs> not mine. It's because I've heard them over and over and over again. Yeah, and sometimes you just shake your head at me. So there you go, right now. <laughs> But yeah, I had a good time. It was funny. You know, you had a good host. I thought the, I'll say it, I thought the headliner was a little headliner, right? The last guy. Mm -hmm. He was a little. 
but, agitated at times. Well, in all fairness, we had a cancellation on Friday morning. The show's on Saturday. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we yeah. had two comics driving up from Austin, and they messaged me at 7 a.m. on Friday that their car broke down in the middle of nowhere and they weren't going to be able to make it then fair enough for yeah i had to replace our feature and our headliner with less than 24 hours notice okay so based off of that i thought they did an amazing job yeah because that would be i mean don't you hear as a i'm not a comedian but don't you have a a good routine in your back pocket when you need to pull it out yes last minute comic yeah and it's hard to step in and do a 30 minute set with less than 24 hours notice but is it yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So anyways, our, our comics was Thad B did the hosting job. Who's amazing like amazing job, amazing job. That little shit. <laughs> he's only been doing comedy like two years, but he's amazing. He's all, and he's an awesome host. I am not a good host. You After know. watching him, no, you're not. Before. No, I told you I wasn't a good host. And yeah. people are like, oh no, you can do it. It's like, no, I can't fucking do it. I can do it. I can do a lot of things if I had to. Oh, I can do it, but it'll be a halfway shitty job. But yeah, I know my spot in the lineup, and it's not host. Um, then we had Spaghetti Jake was our special guest. He was new guy for for being brand new, first paid show, first big gig. I thought he was impressive. Yeah, which could also be a little bit disconcerting when you're a new comic, and all of a sudden you've got your first sold out show and it's first sold out show first big show his timing was off but i couldn't do what he did he settled in he settled in near the end he got really good but he was going a little fast yeah he's a good comic who's in development and definitely worth watching oh yes he's an entertaining jamaic schultz so uh totally stole the show i agree he was good he was so, funny he fell off the stage he did fall off the stage which was hilarious he didn't get hurt <laughs> but he fell off the stage. Yeah. Yeah. And Andrew White Lighter was our headliner. And he had he had a solid twenty minute set, but we had to stretch it into thirty. So he was working out some new material. Right. But you know what? The blue cactus room is a very soft room, meaning uh the audience is really on board almost every time. Yeah. And from everything I've seen, it looks like a, you're selling out to good show. Mm-hmm. So it was entertaining and fun. Yeah. So if you're in Pueblo and you're looking for something to do that won't irritate your swollen veins. <laughs> the food is good. You can't really complain. I mean, it's great local food. So there's that too. Yeah. So the El Nopal restaurant is where the blue cactus room is located. They have a theater space in the back of the restaurant. And the El Nopal has been there for 70 years. It's a family owned restaurant restaurant. It's their family recipes. Authentic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know Chili Rianos are one of your favorite things. And what did you think of theirs? I thought it was really good. It wasn't your typical deep fried Chili Riano. It was it was a Chili Riano that was, was stuffed and had green chili over the top. It was very, I mean, I ate the whole thing. Yeah. I thought it was really, really good. And before this, I was never a fan of tamales. But they take their tamales and smother them in green chili. Oh. And it's like, oh, well, that was a game changer. I should have went with the mild. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Yeah. Paid for that two days later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Awesome salsa. And uh, one of my favorite things on the menu are their chicken tacos. Oh, so so get it with a flour tortilla because they take that puppy and then they fry the whole fucking thing. And it's like, yeah. Oh, I'm hungry. I'd go back just for the food. Yeah. yeah. I mean, literally, it was that good. Yeah. So there we go. That's some of the things that we do uh, in Pueblo. Things to do in Pueblo. We're going again in August? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, we're going to be getting an album recording for one of our comics that night. We're going to try it. Yeah, the, your partner wasn't there this time, the sound guy, so. Right. Yeah, that's the other reason. So people go, how did you get a job in Pueblo? This room, why do you book shows down there if you're in Denver? Well, my old college buddy is the sound guy, so he hooked me up. Plus, it's overly expensive to try to book anything here in, in locally. Well, it's not even the expense. Well, some places were going to be real expensive with us. I haven't found a venue up here, so... Anybody out there that wants to do 
a comedy night in Denver. Let me know. I'll be happy to set some things up. But stay tuned. We're trying to book some things and we'll see where things go from there. All right. We'll take one quick break and then we have one more thing to talk about with y'all. Last thing before we close everything out, there's an awesome TV series that we just finished watching. Well, the season just ended. We've been watching it for a while. Well, ever we, since. We really got into it in the last year or two. Well, pandemic for me. Yeah. Which is, of course, BattleBots. BattleBots is awesome. It's robot fighting time. Yeah. Nothing like good, clean, family fun robots ripping each other to pieces. Talk about techno fear. And techno fear, yeah, those things scare. They're two hundred and fifty pounds of power and scary, and they're just amazing things. And the fact that people can put them together, engineers, make it just amazing to watch. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, World Championship Seven just ended. Spoiler alert, we're going to talk about the outcomes of the fight. So if you haven't watched it yet and you want to, just like, I don't know, shut us down. <laughs> shut up. Stop talking. No. <clears throat> I was I was happy with what the outcome of the, the, the championship. I, I put it this way. I watched it over the, the NHL championship in the last Super Bowl. Um, I did watch the NBA championship the next day just because there was a Denver team involved. Mm -hmm. I was more excited about this winner because it was exciting and fun to watch. Yep. So the grand champion this time was Saw Blaze, which is awesome because he has a hammer saw and also fire. And fire. And fire. fire. <laughs> and a dragon head on it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's got real big D energy. Big, big dragon team. energy. <laughs> <laughs> he was going up against Huge, which was a very strange robot. That which I have been making fun of that robot for years, and now I have to shut the fuck up. Because he did something. He did really well. He, did he really made well. it all the way up to the championship. They dialed in the weird design. So the, the thing with Huge is it's got like these two gigantic wheels on either side, and then like this bar configuration that holds the pieces together. It has a spinning blade in the middle. right in the middle. So I would think most robot robots that they use are probably maybe what a foot off the ground or they're they're so low. A foot that tall. Get, a foot tall. They're so low they get stuck on the floor. Yeah, they're like maybe inch an inch off the ground. And huge is probably maybe three or four inch three or four feet off the ground center. Yeah, the center of it's probably I don't know. About waist high, about, about waist thigh high, high compared or something to everything like that. else, is like foot high. Yeah. So. So definitely very interesting, but then we had like the biggest dick of the competition this year. Yeah, and he was. It riptide. He was destroying robots after they, I mean, were dead, and yeah, I could understand both points of views because these robots are probably about ten thousand dollars a piece. Well, you know what that whole team of riptide is. What? Incel edgelords. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's bad when the rest of the team is like, okay, so let's talk about etiquette for a minute. So normally, yes, there's a lot of bot damage going on, but it's part of the the competition. If the bot's it's, moving and, and stuff, you attack it. Yeah, that's kind of like the rules. That's how it goes. So the reason why Riptide sucks is... Uh, they were up against Captain Shred, who's kind of a cool, but very weird. I don't think he's cool. I don't like Captain Shred. I don't think he's effective. It's but a you, spinner bot. you like it. I like it. You yeah. like the spinner bots. I'm like not that into it. So it looks like a death frisbee, kind of hovering around on the ground, and it goes and hits you. And it spins very fast, and and it does a lot of damage. Yeah. So Riptide was fighting Captain Shred, who never even really makes it to the finals. Very rarely does, but. Anyways, they beat him. They had him knocked up on the side. He wasn't moving. And then that guy went in again 
after they were starting the, con- the countdown, everything, and fucking hit them again, destroyed it. Just completely thrown to pieces. Right. These robots cost up to $100,000. Yeah, yeah. So for him to just, like, go after it to destroy it just to watch the pieces fly. He's just a kid. He's a punk. It, he's an incel edgelord. You know. But then everybody started not talking to him and not liking him and, and yeah. Questioning him. Yeah. Questioning his ethics, going, you know, making them you know, re weigh their robot several times before they had to go into the competition. Yeah. It's like, you know, fighting boxers. You have to make weight to get into this. And they were, after you make weight, you're not supposed to touch the robot. But they were accusing him of going over because they, they were accusing him. This one team was accusing him of, like, um, changing things after weigh-in. And you're not supposed to touch it. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, You can't do that. So that's that's morally wrong. Yeah. But, yeah, unfortunately, the robot is really strong and powerful, so we're going to see it again. We're going to see it again. Who broke his drum? Uh, The local guy here from Aurora. Yes, Copperhead. Copperhead. Yeah. So, yeah, he was pretty good. But then he, he got stuck going up against Huge and couldn't do anything because he, he was just so low to the ground and Huge is so tall. Yeah, he couldn't reach any of the tender bits. Yeah. And, yes, we, we do have battle bots here. In the yes, house. Ryan got me my own battle bot arena for Christmas mm-hmm. this year. It is so awesome. It actually is really fun. So it's by Hexbug. Hexbug, send us more bots because we are like totally talking about you. Sponsored by Hexbug, please. Please. <laughs> please. We don't even want money. We just want more robots. More different robots. Well, we'll take any robot you want to give us. Yeah. We, we killed our Minotaur, but. <laughs> I didn't say that. No. No, I didn't say that. No, the, the thing is glitching. It never worked right. Ooh. Well, the, the thing never, the drum never spun from the day we got it. No. And they're not cheap. They're probably, you know, 60 bucks for two. Yeah. Um, and, okay, no, that's not true. <laughs> it was working really well, but now he's taken so many hits, the the drum is very inconsistent. Oh, no, 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 that's not the case at all. No, no. I can't, I can't take her anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah yes dear shut up dear so the the best part about battle bots at home is they will like go and run and attack each other and then the pieces are designed to come off you know certain pieces, certain pieces certain pieces come off and they will go flying out of the arena and it's <laughs> hilarious we found things like what 10 feet away if not further away yeah that you do have to have the arena you do have to have an arena and you do have to have lots of triple a batteries and lots of i think 14 cell the small round batteries you know like hearing aid batteries hearing aid bat- you have to have a lot of batteries they do take a lot of power yes and they do take uh, some of them work great some of them work Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But they're fun. I mean, they are what they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a lot of fun with it. I remember watching Robot Wars years ago. Years. That's what I remember. It was on Channel 6 because, you know, we never had internet. So I'd watch it on Channel 6. To me, that was the original robot fighting show. Yeah. Which, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Channel 6 is Rocky Mountain PBS. It's our PBS station here in Denver. One of two, which is weird that we have two of them in the market, but we do. Um, so, Robot Wars started in 1998. Correct. And who was the host that you liked? Craig Charles. He who played, is? He is. Uh, he plays on Red Dwarf, which is another wonderful UK show. Yeah. We'll talk about Red Dwarf some other time. Red Dwarf. We got to get back to Red Dwarf. Yeah. The problem is, and I will admit this, we're in a TV low. We are. Any recommendations of good TV shows, let us know. Yes, please. please. So here's our specific request from people. We need like short shows, like some good Adult Swim stuff. We've already watched uh, all the robot chickens. And let's face it, the later 
seasons of Robot Chicken have really sucked. It's all about singing, and the songs are bad. It's all bad. They're not very good. Mr. Pickles is good. Mr. Pickles, most of them were pretty good. They're not all going to be winners. Yeah, true. Um, We're working our way through Super Jail again. Again? Well, I liked Super Jail. Well, I watched it when it was originally out there. Um, Primal. Primal. Yep, which is good, but we keep forgetting to come back to it. Right. So we need some good 30-minute shows and some good hour-long shows. We started watching Fringe, but it's like, ugh, it's so predictable. It's like, ugh. yes, the science and everything is interesting, but it's like, oh, this brilliant, genius, crazy dude. You know, every weird science thing that's out there all relates to something he had worked on in the past. In the past. And I've it's seen... like, bleh, okay, not every... He can't be an expert in every fucking thing. Sorry, my dad's a PhD in engineering. I know for a fact you can't be a specialist in the human brain in ballistic gel instinct <laughs> chemical shit. What else has he been an expert in? I've, I've only seen four episodes and it's been the brain, it's been the nervous system. Human growth. Human growth human um mutation yeah and it's like come on it reminds me of a cheap knockoff of the x-files yeah or a more dramatic version of eureka yeah and I mean, eureka was good except for the one when they time warped they when came. they went into time warp then we lost it we yeah. didn't care anymore right just like vikings the first three seasons of vikings were freaking amazing and then it just got silly yeah, because what I liked most was the historical reenactments of the culture. That's what I liked the most. And then instead it just got weird. Weird. Yeah, once the king died. Yeah, yeah then it just was like dumb. It's kind of like American Horror Story Freaks. I liked the first half of the season, but then the back half of the entire season, in every single episode, somebody would break down going, I whatever whatever because i'm a freak <laughs> why are you killing people because i'm a freak i can't do anything in the world because i'm a freak <laughs> well, i'm a freak and i don't cry like that well you don't have Too seal awful. arms okay you don't have a pinhead i do have an extra vertebrae that's not good enough for a freak show in a circus I'm well because 20 percent of the people in the world have that extra vertebrae so i sort of still have my tail yeah well i'm a freak too i have an extra bend in my colon see so i'm extra full of shit how would they show that at a freak show i have an idea people will pay <laughs> extra for it some people like that stuff <laughs> It's not a Shiza video, okay? <laughs> One girl, long intestine. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, maybe next time I'm going to actually figure out how to use Adobe Audition. Don't count on it. Don't count on it. So, if nothing else, we have our shitty um, make it work. And we'll at least make it work a little bit more often than every three months. All right, so anyways, that's been our show. My name is Donna Shannon. I am here with my husband, Ryan Shannon. And, uh, yeah, so give us a like, give us a follow, give us a comment, tell us what to watch. Um, no OnlyFans stuff, okay? Just, well, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. Anyways, uh, if you didn't like it, keep your comments to yourself. You incel edge lord, shut the fuck up. Until next time. Donna Shannon's Coyote Tales is a production of Coyote Visions Productions and is hosted by Donna Shannon. Ugh, nothing redundant about that. Theme music is Coyote Strut by James Nay. All other music is ethically sourced and licensed from SoundDogs.com and EpidemicSound.com. And we paid for it, I swear. We can provide receipts if necessary. All the stories you've heard are true. Only the names, events, and facts have been changed for our own amusement. In the immortal words of Obi-Wan, so what I told you was true from a certain point of view. Find all of Donna Shannon's website and social media links at Linktree. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot double E slash Donna Shannon. 
Follow us and find out all about upcoming shows and live performances. Now go out there, enjoy life, and grab some tales of your own.